If you're just finding this channel, I've been working on my dream game for quite some time now. In fact, I made the first commit almost exactly a year ago. And while admittedly, most of the work has been done in the last two months when I started taking it seriously, I realized I've never quite explained what exactly this thing is. If you've been following its development so far, you might know it has cannibalism, slavery, severable limbs, cooking, procedural generation, zombies, although it's not a zombie game, and a combination of other features that I've briefly given glimpses of in the past. Today I'll be taking a break from abusing psychotropic compounds to talk about where we're at and where we're going. And since you're watching this on YouTube, you know I'm a little slut for those likes, comments, and subscribes. So before we even get into the video, why don't you like and subscribe all over my naked body? I've been a professional software developer for many years, long enough to have a mortgage, watch my house catch fire at 5 o'clock in the morning, and then see it rebuilt, only to move back in and realize true suffering is the ever-encroaching crawl of your own mortality. A feeling that might drive someone, such as myself, to make something great, or at the very least try as hard as they possibly can and fail. But I'm not going to fail, not unless Hillary Clinton has me killed. And that thing I'm not going to fail at is this game. It's something I've thought about for a long time. In fact, I've even tried to make it before, back before I learned how to program, and again when I started college. But now that I'm a grown-ass man, and my brain is swelling with forbidden knowledge, I'm ready to finally make it happen. And while the details have changed a bit over the years, the core features have always been the same. An RPG with large, procedurally generated worlds, where death is permanent and expected, where the NPCs are complex, and the world is a believable simulation where everything makes sense, and players are free to do whatever terrible or heroic things they want. When I was a kid, I played two games that really impacted my development philosophy. Dwarf Fortress, which showed me how interesting a game can be when you make a complex system that adheres to real-world rules, and an approach to procedural generation that no other game had led me to believe was even possible up until that point. And a lesser-known game called Ivan, a roguelike that showed me how gruesome and interesting a game can be if you just stop treating the main character like they're some kind of god. This was way back in 2007, and I patiently awaited the day that some video game studio would take these obviously brilliant ideas and turn them into a palatable, modern masterpiece. It's now 2022, and the closest thing I've found was Kenshi. Maybe I don't know what people like, but I do know that people like sh** that sucks. So it's time for daddy to step in. You don't have to worry anymore. Just come into my arms. I will carry you. Since I grew up playing Diablo 2, I wanted to get somewhere near the aesthetic of that era by turning 3D models into 2D sprites in the way that was popular back then. But, since I knew removing limbs without necessarily killing the character was a crucial aspect, I had to get a little creative. I did something that I don't think any game up to this point has done. I created a script to generate frames of each animation for every individual limb and for every direction, and then I Frankenstein them back together to create a whole character. This way, if a limb is removed, the animations can still play and the character can still live. This might exist in some form out there, but I've never seen it with legitimate sprite frame-by-frame -frame animations. For items on the ground, I took a similar approach to give them some sense of dimension. They're attached to an invisible 3D object, and their sprite is changed based on the rotation of that object. This creates a unique look that's very satisfying, but it also makes them feel a lot more grounded. I'm a big believer in the importance of satisfaction in games. This is part of what made Diablo 2 so good. I knew I needed blood to be much more than just a particle effect, so it could remain for a long time. There's a ton I want to do here eventually, like dripping and staining walls, weapon type splatter patterns and things of that nature. Since it's such an important aspect, in my opinion, I'm going to work on it until it's the best that you've ever seen. I've done some of the work on procedural buildings and towns, 
The world itself will eventually be large landscapes with biomes, but right now they're very flat and empty. The towns generate buildings and the buildings generate careers, which are filled by the NPCs when they're spawned. In this way, we can generate not just landscapes, but entire game worlds, quests, bosses, factions, religions, everything. In keeping with the theme of childhood inspiration, I use the old school Tetris style inventory. This was mandatory for RPGs when I was a kid, and the modern one item per slot system frankly makes me sick. Like Dwarf Fortress and Ivan, everything is made of a material, and those materials have properties. Your body is made of flesh, your weapon is some kind of metal, and that determines things like their density and melting point. The NPCs have behaviors, like working stores, dragging characters to prison, a fight or flight response based on their personality. There are status effects, poisons, diseases, like being a zombie that can spread from contact. There's a lot more complexity than that, but that's sort of an early explanation of what's been going on so far. But I want to stress that this isn't something I plan on releasing and then walking away from. This is one of those games that will just keep getting updates for years after its release. And while it looks a little rough right now, I had to learn Blender just to make all of this temporary art, and all of it will continue to evolve over time. But since I know what this project means to me, I'm not worried about it. There's no parasitic publishers influencing my vision, no release date window I have to crunch for, and no investors I have to make happy. Anyone that tries to steer me off course can suck my f***ing dick. The only blocker is time, and any income it generates will only make development faster. But rest assured, money or not, I'll be here, making this.